Welcome back to another video. This one is super exciting because I'm going to break down how I shot the official Portsmouth home kit launch video for their 125th anniversary. Insane to say out loud, uh, an incredibly proud moment for myself in my filmmaking career. Feedback I've had from Portsmouth is that it, the, the kit launch did really well as well. I feel that I had a, albeit a small part but a part of the marketing a really really cool experience and one that i look back on with fond memories and if you haven't seen the video yet here it is So I actually shot this at the end of June. So it's taken me a while to make this video. The whole process of me actually doing it was a little bit chaotic. So I actually went to Florida on the 25th of June and their deadline was for the end of June. Now I wasn't gonna be in the country for the last, what, five or six days. So already made the deadline even shorter than it already was anyway, because I kind of found out that I was gonna be doing this in like the second week of June. I didn't have that long to, to actually plan the concept of the video. We had a couple of meetings about like how they wanted the video to go from their side, but they very much gave me kind of like full creative freedom to shoot it how how I saw it essentially the kind of the brief and the main things they wanted to get across was the text that you actually see in the video so for the shirt for the city for Portsmouth those taglines that are in the video that was kind of like their brief and guideline that that's kind of what their campaign centered around so they had to be in the video now kind of my take on that was like okay let's show each element of that and what's really important with a commercial or like when you're trying to reveal something at the end is pacing and dynamic within the video and that was something that I really wanted to get across to, to Portsmouth and I, I was really a big advocate on was having a really like dynamic video and if we're going to show obviously it's the 125th anniversary like we kind of want to show elements of the past and like what's led to this moment so they actually sent across loads of archive footage that I kind of went through and picked out key moments I think would suit the video in general so once we're going to have like the main theme of the video in place it was about finding a song that had the dip in dynamic so i wanted something that kind of like started slow built up built up built up then dropped right back down and then bang revealed right at the end of the kit to be honest with most projects and commercial shoots and any spec ads or anything when you try and find music it is normally really really hard and it didn't actually take me too long to to stumble on onto this track now this track isn't actually the the, the song that's in its entirety i've split it up into different sections so it's actually kind of an original track, if you will, because some of the moments like it, it lasted too long or it like went on for another 10 seconds. And I was like, this, this the video literally can only be one minute and 15 seconds max. It was really key for me to, to get that balance right between it. And I, you really can't tell that I've kind of split up the music. Like every time it changes pacing is, is when I've kind of like manipulated the track a little bit. The main reason I wanted a dynamic track was as soon as Portsmouth approached me to do this video, I, I've had this almost like in the back of my head this idea of the music dropping down and you hear the iconic chant play up Pompey, Pompey, play up because it's such an like, iconic chant for Portsmouth when I was imagining it and I was kind of planning it and, and putting a reference video together that stuck out in my head so much I was like we have to have that in the video even if it's just like walking up the tunnel I kind of like debated what it should be in that moment original plan was actually for crowd shots but with what they had, and obviously we shot this when the season wasn't ongoing, what the, the archive footage they had, there was nothing really that matched the tone of the video. So I just got a nice simple shot at Fratton of going up the dugout. And I think with that play at Pompey in an empty stadium, it really has that heritage and iconic feel that that 
that sound is still echoing around an, an empty stadium with no one in there. And I, I love that idea. And I really wanted that bit to be before the song goes back up again and, and it reels the kit in its entirety. Because obviously at the start of the video, I kind of tease it a little bit with them walking up that same tunnel. So it has that kind of link within it. Again, these aren't really things that people when watching will pick up on, but it's definitely something that is in my thought process when piecing this this kind of video together. And if I just show you uh, the timeline, so this is what I was actually working with. Straight off the bat, you can see that the audio and the soundtrack for this video is complicated as. I use so many sound effects for this. Like loads of different sound effects, lots of swooshes, like especially on the big impacts, there's a swoosh to kind of like reiterate that kind of impact and that cut. Uh, loads of bird noises, bikes, cars, buses, wind, um, all sorts, especially in that kind of like opening segment when you're establishing the, the people and the, the city of Portsmouth. There's many places in Portsmouth that's like really iconic and symbolic. And I kind of wanted like a unique look on how Portsmouth is portrayed. Like I could have gone to like the usual spots to, to, to shoot the city, but I kind of wanted to get that like nitty gritty side of Portsmouth as well, like the people factor, because it is a very community and people driven place. So I really wanted to get that across in this kind of like kit launch 125th anniversary video. And if I actually just drag this out and show you how much footage we actually didn't use. <laughs> so for a one minute commercial, this kind of gives you an idea of the amount there is to play with. And if Portsmouth come back and said they didn't like something, I, nine times out of 10, I had an alternative clip. I think what's really important for these sort of videos as well is kind of teasing the kit at the start. Like right at the start, you can't really see what the kit is, but you, you can kind of make out elements to it. Instantly lets people know that what this video is about. Uh, obviously the title kind of spoils it as well, but all this kind of like lens flurry that is going on over the, over the top of these clips, is actually me just putting the camera into low shutter and with the big headlight that I had, I just kind of like, with like one fifth of a shutter, I was just kind of moving the camera really quickly around this light to kind of give me that like, that lighty effect. That's that's all me, that's not like an ad, that's not a bought effect or a downloaded effect, like that's that's me doing that um, in the changing rooms with a big light just waving the camera in front of it to, to get this cool effect. And then that's the transition that I really, really love. I actually use the in-camera sounds for this bit and added in a bus noise and a bike just to kind of like reiterate that kind of like you're moving into the city. Obviously this Fratton station is iconic for people who's going to the ground because and I've gone through these arches many, many times going towards Portsmouth. It's always so hectic there. So it was nice to kind of get like the less busy part of the day. This, this is a really iconic place in Portsmouth, up Portsmouth Hill, it really just overlooks the whole of Portsmouth City and I knew this was definitely a shot I wanted to get. And we were lucky on the day that it was quite like hazy and clear. You could really still see like the, the Spinnaker Tower in the background. Again, this is from the archive footage that Portsmouth actually gave me. I kind of went through all of the stuff they gave me and kind of picked out stuff that I thought was really relevant for this video and fit the tempo and the pacing. I kind of wanted to include like really old retro stuff. I've added a couple of like grainy effects onto this as well to make it look extra older and, and slightly more digital. And going through the commentary as well, I, I th there was commentary attached to the video. Kind of was just picking those bits out and making up my own sentences with the commentary. Love that shot as well. There's just something about this shot that I just think is super like cinematic and, and he's big cheery smile, eyes are popping. You got the nice scenic colors in the background. That's one thing you can't beat with the black magic. The black magic is incredible with the colors. And I think it really comes across nicely in this video in particular. And then there's the drop down into the, to the play out force mode. Again, I used a swooshing effect to kind of add that impact. And then dip it out from black. And then using an in-camera transition to, uh, so in, in this dugout clip, I whipped to the right and then I knew in my head, because I shot that before, that this shot, when the kit's revealed, that I just need to go in the same direction and then match the clips up and then it creates this really cool, like, seamless transition. And then that's the first time you see the kit in its entirety. I think it's important to note that we split up this shooting day into a couple of sections. So the bits in and around Fram Park and then the other bits in the, in the Portsmouth changing rooms. I had a big Forza 60 just kind of like to the to the left of them shining down and to get these like nice cinematic in the changing rooms, nice lighting, nice and dark, cinematic. It's just kind of like some nice fillers between actually in and around Fratton Park. Otherwise, it's, you just cut into the same sort of shots. So it just needed a bit of like color and variety in it. So once everything's shot, I had about, I, th I want to say like three three or four days to, to bring this video together. We actually shot the people sections like a week before the kit launch. So 
I was able to put that stuff in place, send that across. Because obviously the deadline was very, very short. I was able to send that across to get that signed off for, so they knew what bits were going where in the video just to make the, the process of actually finishing the video a lot more efficient. So the whole video wasn't completely new to them. They kind of knew what some elements of the video were going to be already. Overall, I'm incredibly proud of this project. Loads of pieces had to come together and I feel like the universe really aligned, enabling me to actually do this video because it was very close to me going to Florida and I would have been absolutely gutted if I had to pass up on this opportunity to do this. Portsmouth were absolutely buzzing with it. They sent me a really nice message after it was all done and kind of like the success afterwards of the, the, the selling of the kit as well. Hopefully this won't be the last project I get to do with them. I, I kind of did their whole kit launch campaign. So I did this commercial for their home kit launch video. I did the photos for the home kit launch. I did the away kit pictures and I also did the third kit pictures. Definitely a pinch myself moment, even telling people I did it in the moment as well. And I was actually in Universal Studios when the Portsmouth video launched and obviously the time difference there. So when I woke up at 8 a.m., it had already been out for like four or five hours. So like waking up to just loads of messages of people just going, this is incredible and seeing people's reaction to the actual video was really, really like emotional almost because it takes a lot of work to get to these moments and to get such to get given such an amazing opportunity to do this and kind of showcase what I can do at this scale. Yeah, it meant a lot seeing seeing everyone's positive reaction. And it helped that the kit is actually a really nice kit as well, because if the kit wasn't as nice, I feel like the feedback might not have been as, uh, as pleasant, but I hope you guys have enjoyed hearing me talk about this video, learn a little bit, kind of put it in perspective of how much it goes into these sort of videos in terms of the timeline and, and kind of my my creative thoughts and on why I did certain things. Yeah, I can't wait to the next one. Fingers crossed. That is all from me and I will see you soon.